Hey, what's going on everybody? Today, I'm going to show you how to create a Electron React application. And to follow along, all you'll need is the link in the description down below. And in that link, I will lead you to a Google Drive page where we have two files, a PDF file, which just is this same exact file right here, and a editable slash like file that you can just kind of copy and paste all this stuff and it's just a word file so again say I tell you to install this commands that commands will just be right there and yeah just like that let's get started so uh, we're going to be creating a react application there we go and I'm just going to uh, cd dot dots there we go and in our tutorial directory, I'm just going to paste in this line, and we're going to create an Electron application with the name of my-app. Now, uh, the reason I'm doing it this way is because there's a lot of stuff, and I think it's kind of a pain in the butt to type in some of this. So I think it'll be a lot easier for most of you guys um, to just copy and paste all of this. Um, so yeah, I, I left in the description down below the Google Drive link to all of these files. So yeah. When this is finished installing, we'll then cd into the directory called my app and complete pasting the rest of this. So cd my dash app. Now, obviously, if you already have an elect or an Electron application and you want to convert it to TypeScript, um, you wouldn't do this initial one most likely. And I mean, depending on if you already have Webpack and stuff like that. But this is um, how you get going from the ground up with TypeScript and Electron. So yeah, we are now in here. We can type in code dots to open this project in VS Code. And kind of move this over a little bit. There we go. Okay, perfect. So next step is to go to the webpack.rules.js file, which is this one right here. And what we're going to want to do is paste in this little object right here. So if you can see it's basically from the dot to the last bracket. And we're just going to paste this in right below there or above. It doesn't really matter as long as it's above this um, closing bracket. So and this will allow us in our Babel uh, loader to actually handle JSX files. Next, let's go to the index.html file. Let's go here and let's do, let's change our title to my um, React app. Perfect. And let's go into the body of the HTML and get rid of that. And let's create a div with an ID of root. And what this ID of root will do is it's where we'll actually render our React application. So we can close out of the HTML. We're done with that. Step six is to actually go to the renderer.js file and import these two files. One of them's already there. So let's get rid of all of these comments. And you can see the index.css is already there. So let's just import um, dot slash app.jsx. And just like that, we are done with our render.js file. Now we have to actually create this app.jsx file, app.jsx. So let's go ahead and do that. First thing we're going to want to do is import React from React. Perfect. We're going to import React DOM from React DOM. And then what we're going to want to do is we're going to do React DOM dot render. And this is basically just like any old Electron application. It takes in two parameters. It's going to take in something to render. So we'll pass in a div, uh, a div, oh, there we go, a div, and in here we'll put an h1 that says hello from React, and I'll leave the formatting issues. Next, as the second parameter for this render function, it takes in the element to render this to. So we're just going to do documents.get element by id root, which is the elements we have in here. Perfect. So this is actually all we need for this file as of right now. Next, let's go to, actually let's run this just to show you that we do have a working Electron React application right now. So we'll start rendering, um, we'll start getting this visually and let's see what happens. So it'll take a few seconds to load 
and we get my React app, which remembers the title, and hello from React, which is what we put right here. Perfect. So let's finally finish this off by actually communicating from the renderer process to the main process, say on click of a button. So let's add a button. Let's say click me. And what we're going to want to do is that an on area on click function capture and we'll say I'm just gonna call it clicked I guess I'm gonna create that function up here I'm just gonna make it an asynchronous function for now and you'll see why in a second and what we're just gonna do is we are gonna leave that blank just for now we'll get back to that in about a minute and a half so in the main.js file what we're gonna want to do to actually accept communication is deal with um, preload scripts. So typically a lot of tutorials will tell you to do node integration to true, which is absolutely terrible. Do not do this. They set the default to false last update because it's a bad practice. Instead, we're going to still do the same thing, but we're going to make sure it's actually secure. Node integration is not secure. And we're going to pass in a preload script. So I'm going to do path.join and then I'm going to join the current directory name and I'm going to join it with preload.js and that is that. Lastly in the preload.js file which we haven't created so we'll create that .js we are going to um, basically copy this stuff which I'm not going to go ahead and copy it I'm just going to kind of write it out const um, ipc renderer and context bridge B -R -I -D, is equal to require electron and now that we have access to these objects we can do context bridge dot expose in main world and we're going to give it the name of app um, you can call this whatever you want I'm just going to call it my app camel cased and we'll pass in an object which will have the parameter of say hello, we'll say. So say hello, which is going to be a function. We can pass in some args, for example. We can do IPC render dot invoke, which what invoke does is it sends a message to the main process via some sort of channel. It's an asynchronous function that returns a promise, so um, we'll have to await on that promise. And it can take an arguments just like that. So I'm going to say arg. And we're going to say say hello is what the function does. And just like that, that is it for our um, context bridge. So say we actually want to listen for that function now, because we're sending the function, but we're not actually listening for it just yet. So we'll do ipc main dot handle. Um, and we'll listen for say hello. And what this will allow us to do is get access to an event and an arguments function or uh, properties. And here I'm just going to console cons console.log the arguments. And then we're just going to return um, hello from the main hello from the main process. The app version is, and I'm actually just going to pass app dot get version as well. Perfect. So right now we have an asynchronous bidirectional communication. So when we send a message to say hello, we'll just console.log log the arguments to show you that you can pass in arguments, and then you can do some sort of work here and then return values back. So Let's go into the app.jsx and actually implement this clicked function. And to do that, we can do window.app, or my app, I called it. And you may be like, okay, what's this window.myapp? Well, window is referencing the global scope. So we actually don't even need to show this. I'm just kind of keeping it there just as like a little bit of a reference. So we can do my app dots say hello. And that's where the my app comes from. So say hello is a function dot say hello. And just like that, we can say const result is equal to myapp.sayhello. 
and this is a, a uh, promise, so we'll just do that. Now, if I console.log results, when we do it, what you'll see is that we'll get the result. So I'm just going to npm start. And while this is um, going over here, I'll leave it up for a split second. Okay, so we get hello from React, as we were expecting before. Nothing's happening different, but if I click this button, what you'll see is we get undefined, a whole bunch of undefineds actually. And the reason we're getting undefined is because we're not passing anything into this parameter, into the uh, function, but we're expecting some sort of arguments. Uh, we don't need to, but in this case, I just wanted to show you that yes, you can pass in whatever you want. I'm just gonna say hello from the is here. Now, when I rerun this and I click, we say, Instead of getting on the finds, we get hello from the renderers here. So we're sending messages whenever the user clicks the button, and we're getting the messages back in this result variable, which conveniently is right here. And it says hello from main process, the app version is 1.0.0. And that is how you create bidirectional safe communication with React and Electron. So if you found this video useful, or if you're a little bit confused on what was going on in the preload script, I do have uh, separate tutorials on context isolation itself, which I highly recommend you get used to um, just at the very basic level. But long story short, it allows us to separate and isolate stuff. So in the main process, or like in here, we can't just get access to IPC renderer, you know, like this. It wouldn't work. And in fact, when I run this, we're going to get an error. Um, as you can kind of see, like, it's it already froze up. <laughs> uh, there's not like we, we can't really do anything with that because it's not secure and we don't want it to be like that. We don't want to have node integration set to true. Um, so that's where we use context isolation. So yeah, if you found this video useful, please like, comment, subscribe, leave any questions you have down below, and I'll talk to you guys in the next episode. Peace.